Now, let's get started with the final constraint called foreign key constraint. Basically, foreign key constraint is added for the referential integrity. That means one column should refer to some another column, probably in the same or in different table. The referring column should have only one of those values which are actually there in the main column. For example, here if I have a couple of tables, that is the department table in which there are a couple of fields like department ID and department name. Alright. So now I'll enter the department IDs into this particular column and this would be decorated as the primary key. But in the another table, let's say in employees, each employee would be working in a particular department. And here also I want to get some department IDs. For example, here if I have the departments like 10, 20, 30, I want like, okay, uh, if I have only these three departments, each and every employee would be working in any one of these departments. So for each record, I will enter 10 or 20 or 30 or maybe in null also. But any employee cannot have a department 40 because we don't have department 40. So to ensure this particular thing, I should make this particular column as the foreign key which would be referring to this column and it will make sure like this foreign column or the child column in the normal languages would be having only those values which are there in this primary key field. Apart from that, it can only take a null as well. So let's see what all and how we can achieve these goals using the foreign key now practically. So just as we discussed in the example, we have a couple of tables here. The first table is the departments table in which there's a field called department ID, which I already created as a primary key. And here in the employees table, you can see there is a field called department ID. Now, as we just discussed, I want to make this department ID as a foreign key of this department ID, which is the primary key, so that here I can enter only those values which are available there in the department stable department ID. So to do that, what I'll say is I'll say alter table employees because obviously I'm going to make the foreign key in the employees table. So I will say alter table for employees. Now, as always for adding a constraint, add constraint, constraint name, EMP DPT relation or maybe foreign key, whatever you want. All right. And then the type that is the foreign key. So in which particular field you want to pass the foreign key like this, uh, here I'm talking about the employees table and here the field name is DPT ID. So DPT ID. Here, by chance, the names in both the tables are same, but it's never like that. It's ne nothing like that the foreign key and primary key must be having a same name. No, it's nothing like that. Again, you can put anything, any name out here. So this is about the foreign key. Here, I just specified like in the employees table, I want department ID to be a foreign key, but which column it would be referring. So for telling that here, I will say references, then departments means the base table inside which the primary key exists and inside the parenthesis we will enter the column name means the primary key column name. All right. Now, uh, if you will enter this command, if you will execute this command, the relationship will be uh, there. But if you want later means uh, suppose here I created a department ID 10 and inside this I have a number of departments sorry number of employees working in department 10. So what will happen if I'll try to remove the record of department 10 from departments table there are a lot of dependent records are here in the employees table. So I have a number of options out there like on delete cascade I can write this three these three words as well what they will do as soon as you will remove the department 10 all the related records in the department's employees table 
uh, will be removed means if you will delete the re department 10 all the employees who are working in department 10 will also be removed from the employees table if you will write on delete cascade similarly you can say on delete set null means as soon as you will remove any department let's say department 10 so all the employees who are working in department 10 their department ID will be set to null alright but if you will not specify anything like that so what it will do it will simply will not allow you to delete the department 10 means if there is any dependency of that particular record the Oracle server will not allow you to do that so here I will say on delete set null because deletion is never a good option so let's execute this and you see table altered now after this this department ID can have only those records who are already there in the departments table and if you will delete any of the department ID from departments table the relevant records in employees would be having a null in their department ID 